Hey there students, um, on this clip we're going to be going over how to find uh, the domain and range of a radical function. Um, one of my uh, Twitter followers requested to have this problem solved, so I'm going to go go ahead and go over it. So uh, the question is as follows. We're supposed to find, find the domain and the domain and range of the function f of x equals uh, the square root of x plus 3. Now this is a radical function because you have positive 3 that indicates the uh, horizontal shift in the left direction 3 units. Okay, so you can visualize what the sketch looks like. I'm going to show you using a calculator how to draw this graph, this function, and then uh, I'll show you a computer generated graph and I'll use it to find the domain and range. Alright, so if you want to graph this, we just have enter the square root of Second function, x squared, which is a square root function, x plus 3, enter, and graph. So you see what the graph looks like. It's a typical radical function, shifted 3 units to the left, okay? So that's what the graph looks like. I'm going to show you the results graphically, and then um, I will show you how to do the results, how to find it algebraically, okay? So there goes your radical function. This function right here is y... Uh, this function is a function y, which is f of x, equals the square root of x plus 3. Okay, you can see the 3 units shift to the left because of this plus 3 next to the x-axis. Alright, so one thing you want to remember is that the domain, the domain is like uh, the width of the function. How wide is the function? The domain is like width or the vertical, uh, the horizontal, the horizontal spread. Okay, so when you think of domain, think about width or a horizontal spread. Horizontal spread. How wide is the graph? Okay. Um, always mean the same thing. And then when you think about the range, uh, when you think about the range of a function, you think about the height. The height or the vertical spread. How high or how low does it go? Vertical spread. Okay, so this all then basically indicates the range, all right? So I'm going to use these two ideas on this graph right here. Let's start with the domain first. So if you look at the domain, how wide does the graph go? You notice that um, it starts from uh, a certain x value and goes all the way to the right. So let's see. If you look at it, you know it starts from here, from the negative 3, from 3, and goes all the way to the right, okay? So if it starts from negative 3, with this point included, and goes all the way to the right, what is what does this number line indicate? Along the x is basically indicates that x is greater than or equal to uh, negative 3. Okay, or you can write this as negative 3 is less than or equal to x and x is less than infinity. Okay, so most books write it this way. If I want to write this using parentheses notation, I can also write this as uh, edgy bracket negative 3, comma, infinity. So we're going from negative 3 all close enough. I'm going from negative 3, uh, which is the value you have right here, all the way to infinity. Okay? So x is bigger than every value uh, that's starting from negative 3 and upwards. So there goes your domain. So this right here is your domain. Now if you want to find the range, the range is basically the uh, vertical spread of the graph. So ask yourself how low does the graph go? It goes as low as the x-axis. And then it goes upwards from there. Okay, it goes high, it goes up forever because this graph has this increase in positive slope. So how can we depict that using uh, inequality notation? The fact that it goes from zero all the way up. Uh, basically, it's y is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, same thing as saying zero is less than or equal to y is less than infinity. Or using parentheses notation, you can say you're going from zero all the way to infinity. Alright, so all these basically are different ways you can talk about uh, the range, the range of the function. Alright? Okay, so now that we have the domain and the range graphically, let's go ahead and look for, for it uh, algebraically, okay? So we want to look for the domain and the range algebraically. All right, so now we're going to attempt to find uh, the domain and the range algebraically. So let's uh, write down the title. 
uh, I'm gonna try to this the algebraic approach. All right, so let me write down the title: uh, the algebraic approach, algebraic approach. Okay, so you want to note that first of all, you must find the domain. I mean, the domain, and then that's what you use to find the range. Okay, so we need to find the domain first because the range is dependent on that. Okay, because we know that the x variable is independent, but the y variable is dependent. The function is dependent on x. All right, so we have the function f of x equals the square root of x plus 3. So what are the acceptable input values for a radical function? If you want to generate a positive or real output, the radical must be greater than 0, or else you have imaginary solutions, right? So x plus 3 has to be uh, greater than or equal to 0, or else you have a negative radical which generates imaginary solutions and you don't have a graph okay so to solve if you solve this that will give us the the um the domain because the domain is a restriction on x so to get x by itself you subtract three from both sides and they have x is greater than or equal to negative three all right so this is the domain domain is uh x is greater than or equal to negative three or you can write it as uh, from negative 3 all the way to infinity or you can write it as you're starting from negative 3 less than or equal to x x is less than infinity all these work okay this the importance of these other two notations is that it tells you the lower and upper bounds that can help us to find our range all right so with these two notations it tells me that 3 is a lower lower input lower input and negative infinity is the upper okay tells me how high the graph goes assume that assuming that it's continuous and we know that this graph is continuous uh from negative three all the way to infinity okay so this also this is the lower lower input and that right there is the upper input okay so if i want to find my range if i want to find my range is knowing that the fact the considering the nature that this graph just keeps on going up and up and up all I need to do is just plug in my lower input and my upper input into the function and that tells me um, what, what the, the range is going to be, okay? So if I want to calculate the range, I need my lower limit. So let's look for the lower limit first. Uh, lower limit, lower limit. I, need, I look at my domain, what is the lower limit? Negative 3. So I'm going to plug in. Plug in x equals negative 3 into the function. So I know f of x is the square root of x minus 3. So I'm going to plug in x plus 3. I'm going to plug in the lower limit, okay? So I'm going to do f of negative 3 equals the square root of negative 3 plus 3. This gives you um, the square root of 0, which is equal to 0, okay? Now remember, this works perfectly with graphs that go only in one direction. If there are reversals in this graph, then this are, we need to find a max and a min within that interval. Okay, we know that this graph constantly increases, so this we can be confident is a lower point. Okay, so uh, the lower limit, lower, uh, we can call the lower bound, is basically y equals zero. So that is how low the graph goes. Okay. So now I want to look for the uh, upper limit. For the upper limit, what I'll do is I'll plug in the highest value that this function can achieve. All right. So if you look at the solutions, we, we found with the inputs, the highest input is infinity, right? So we're going to plug in, plug in x equals infinity. So f of infinity in this graph is going to be the square root of infinity plus 3. A really big number, infinitely big number plus 3 is simply the square root of an infinitely large number. And the square root of an infinitely large number is simply infinity. So that tells you that the upper upper bound of this function is infinity. It doesn't have any upper bound. It just goes up and up and up forever. Okay? So the lower bound is y equals 0. And the upper bound is uh, y equals infinity. So how do we write this? With, with a notation, we can write it as... Uh, so the range, 
somebody says um y is greater than zero greater than or equal to zero because it goes from zero all the way up forever or you can write it as starting from zero it goes from zero all the way to infinity or you can say using any forward notation zero is less than or equal to y and y is less than infinity okay so that's basically basically the range remember the range is a little bit technical for the range you have to remember that this graph increases forever that's why we can be sure that the lower and upper bounds limits of the domain will suffice if the graph were going up and then down and then up again then we have to find where the max and the mean are uh, and then go from there all right so that's why it's good to have a calculator you can have or know the nature of the graph you deal with to address any uh, reversals in the in the graph and then factor in that into into your calculations all right so uh, there you have it Let's just keep it up this is a range and then the domain let me just reintroduce the domain down here domain was um, x is greater than or equal to negative three or you go from negative three to infinity or you can say negative three is less than or equal to x and x is less than infinity okay so there you have it so thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. Please uh, feel free to subscribe uh, to my channel and share with your friends. More videos can be found on myglosser.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.